Thank you. Uh, Deputy Speaker, in moving this very important motion, I want to speak in support of, of, more, of the more than 2,700 Australians, uh, mostly boys and men, living with haemophilia. I want to also acknowledge the members of the Haemophilia Foundation of Australia, and I want to thank them for raising awareness of this insidious disease, not only during uh, the Bleeding Disorder Awareness Week, but also I want to thank them for the work that they do in delivering vital support to Australians with bleeding disorders through advocacy, education and promotional research. I also want to acknowledge my parliamentary colleague, the member for La Trobe, for signing this motion uh, in a show of bipartisanship, and also the member for MacArthur, who, as a doctor, has treated many sufferers of haemophilia and understands the importance of this motion and uh, indeed thanked me for raising it in the House. Haemophilia is a rare and lifelong bleeding disorder that is complex to diagnose and difficult to manage. Australians who suffer from haemophilia lack a clotting factor and therefore suffer from bleeds due to injury, surgery or, sadly, for no apparent reason at all. But it's the quality of life available for those Australians who live with haemophilia that concerns us, uh, Deputy Speaker, and concerns me, and that's what's prompted me to raise this motion. Australians living with haemophilia face physical, financial, employment and psychological challenges throughout their lives. Pain, patience and perseverance. They are the three words my Jakarna constituent, David Cunningham, uses when asked to describe his life and living with haemophilia. Pain, because people are in pain all the time, or as he says, at least I am, quote unquote, and says the pain of a major bleed is a nine out of 10 and that pain can last for days on end. Patience, to get through the ongoing hospital visits during a lifetime of living with haemophilia, and perseverance, and I quote David, to keep going, don't give up, don't sit around and do nothing, quote unquote. David is 63 years old and lives with haemophilia, uh, with haemophilia A. He was first diagnosed as a young boy. With no known family history of the bleeding disorder, there were limited people around David who understood the impact haemophilia was having on his life. Growing up in the 60s and 70s, David remembers that there wasn't a lot of support available to him so he could independently manage his condition. And even though, uh, even though he acknowledges that today patients have much greater flexibility and choice, he says there's still more to do and adds, unless there is a cure, people like him with haemophilia still need support and relief from the disease. David, like many others who have been living with haemophilia all their lives, has had a chance to reflect and recount what life is really like for, the, for sufferers. And even though his bleeds lessened as he got older, when he did bleed, he'd have to take a week off work at a time to recover. With sick leave being used up, he resorted to unpaid leave. Then, when his condition worsened, work became untenable. David retired forcibly at 45 after 20 years in a profession he loved, including teaching the young minds at Broadmeadows West Technical School. As a result of haemophilia A and other health complications, such as um, type 2 diabetes, David had to go on the disability support pension and is still on that today. This is a man who loved to play football and cricket, but had to stop because of ongoing bleeding into his joints and muscles. An avid sports fan and a one-eyed Collingwood supporter, because of mobility issues, he can't go to the games anymore and can only watch his beloved team on television. He says haemophilia is an isolating disease, even more so for him. The bleeds to his knees and ankles have taken their toll and now David has limited capacity and walks with crutches. I don't get out as much as I used to because it's hard for me to get out, sit down and then get up, so I just stay home says David. David wishes that he was able to enjoy his retirement uh, more, but says living with haemophilia has made this impossible. You get used to it. Life goes on and you learn to accept it, quote unquote. Haemophilia sufferers shouldn't have to get used to this quality of life, Deputy Speaker, that sees them retire in their prime, being unable to live an active and healthy life, suffer from financial distress, and the list goes on for many of them. More needs to be done to find a cure to this lifelong disease so that we can give our Australians who suffer from haemophilia the quality of life they deserve. More investment needs to go into research and development into this disease. So I'd like to call on the government to work even closer and constructively with the state and territory governments to ensure all Australians with bleeding disorders receive timely access to the treatment they need. This Deputy Speaker will ensure that people like David can finally get the care, treatment and quality of life that should be afforded to all Australians 
one which David says will, quote unquote, life would be life saving for the young Australians who suffer in silence because of this disease. I thank the uh, honourable